I'm Deb Shoemaker, an art therapist with Integrated Therapy Associates, and I would like to talk with you a little bit about how art therapy can help people who have depression and bipolar disorder. So depression often, um, part of depression can often come from just suppressing feelings and keeping them inside, and sometimes when something really, really sad has happened, um, it's difficult for people to talk about. It might be something that was embarrassing or just too painful for words. So the art process can give people a way to express those feelings and get them out onto the paper or in the clay or collage or whatever medium they're using. Um, so that helps in and of itself with depression because we know that when we keep our feelings stuffed in, they're either going to implode or explode and um, that's that's what depression is. It's it's a graphic indicator for people, so it, it can be a really good way to, um, to mark when a manic episode is an early onset um, because the, the, the artwork, the images um, do change. And some uh, examples of what someone who is going through a manic stage, art, their artwork may look like is lots of colors, um, colors that don't, that may not be realistic to uh, to the image, although that's not you know mutually that exclusive. It can, not always, but um, or or just all over the place on the paper, needing more paper, needing more art supplies. Those can be indicators for the clinician and for the client or patient to 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 actually identify that there is the, the mania stage um, going on or surfacing and then whatever that person has in place for their coping skills can be employed and and that varies for people for some it might be an um, information to uh, check their meds with their physician or it might be um, they have other coping skills that they that that particular person has in place and and that's um, like a, a flag for them to to know to get those in order or maybe uh, exercising is one to go get to the gym or go for a walk or contacting their support system remember to always consult with a professional art therapist for more information Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 11th episode of the Let's Talk It Out podcast. My name is Alec Lifschultz, also known as Trey Busy to a lot of people. Today's episode will be about art and mental health. And as you heard Deb Shoemaker say, she's a professional artist. She's also very involved in the mental health community. Uh, she said art is a great way for you to express yourself, but also a way for you to release the inner feelings that you hold in a lot of times when people... You know, depression is caused from holding stuff in, and art allows you to express yourself. And that's very, very powerful saying, because even at the end, she said something as simple as going to the gym for people helps them release something. Like, you're creating art, like, with your body, how you work out and the ways you work out and how the things you target is your own expression of yourself and your goals. So, yeah, like I said, tonight's episode is about art and mental health. I'm really fired up about it. Uh, I like. I want to thank everybody for tuning in last week. You guys had the chat room on fire last week. The chat room was really, really, man. I had a hard time keeping up with it. It was really fast moving. Um, my mom came on. She she said a lot of great things, as she does. You know that's how that's where I get it from. But she's in the chat room now. She she has she's back to hold it down with you guys in the chat room. So, with that being said, I'm not alone tonight. I have a very special guest with me tonight. Uh, she took time out of her busy, busy life to come have this conversation with me because she didn't have to at all. You know, <clears throat> Simone is a business owner. She's a creator. She's an artist, an actress, a f photographer. I mean, hell, I don't, I really can't think of what she doesn't do when it comes to art and expressing yourself. So, that being said, Simone, would you like to tell people a little bit about yourself? Hi, guys. I'm Simone. Um, thanks, Alec, for having me. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the super warm introduction. And just I'm super excited to um, just to be here and talk with you guys and talk to you and like, you know, talk with the chat room as well. 
Um, yeah, I'm from Chicago. That's like the main thing I tell people. <laughs> I'm from Chicago. That's, that's very that's very important for you. But to get that's that like out the, the that's now. like I think that's like everything you need. Like I'm from Chicago. Period. Like that's the end of <laughs> my bio. Um, so can you, Simone, can you tell people, you know, and I, and I always tell people they always associate violence with Chicago, but I try to tell people all the time, Chicago is one of the greatest cities when it comes to art and museums. Can you please explain this to everybody? I mean, I think any place where there's black people, any place where there's poverty, any place where there's the necessity to um, cope and the necessity to make do there's going to be great art. So not just Chicago, which is part of the reason why I tell people I'm from Chicago is because um, I recently moved from St. Louis and now I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, but I travel still to Chicago, to St. Louis. Um, I get to go around to museums in Cleveland. I'm hoping to get connected with places, uh, different art places and museums in Detroit. I mean, uh, honestly, the Midwest is a beautiful, beautiful place right now, especially for the arts and the artistic renaissance that we're um, experiencing because of a lot of different things that go on. So we can talk about that more later, though. <laughs> yeah, we can. Uh, like, the reason I say that, though, is because museum-wise, man, Chicago has a very, <laughs> so very good good visuals. So they have a wide variety of different exhibits and stuff that you can see. And people do come here and, and visit. Right? People from different countries and stuff come here to check it out. You know, so that just tells you everything you need to know about the art in Chicago. Yeah, I agree. I mean, anything in Chicago, some of the greatest creators I've ever seen have come from Chicago. But then there's also, like I said, the Midwest is like in general, just has this really beautiful like combination of things. And I'll say this too, like, though, you know, Chicago is beautiful and has a lot of great museums. We're on one of the only places that really still charge admission fees for museums. So I would like like to see that change but you know we know that you know illinois is crooked but we're not going to talk about that tonight um uh, <laughs> you yeah. know we're not going go <laughs> to have illinois may literally charge you to breathe air but, yeah so i want to ask you simone um look we're going to get into a little bit of a personal questions i want to know like what are, what have experiences have you had with mental health like even you directly or people close to you like you know, you you agreed to come onto the show. You know for sure that this show is about, you know, mental health and having a conversation about it that other people aren't willing to have. Yeah. So, with that being said, I wanted to ask you, like, a couple personal questions. Like, even you specifically, like, have you had any direct experiences with, you know, certain things like anxiety or depression? Anything such yeah, as that? Yeah, certainly. I mean, and then, like, <clears throat> I don't get to talk about... Um, I don't get to talk much with my family about my parents because my father isn't in my life and my mother passed away when I was 16. So I didn't, you know, with, with a family dynamic that I have, you know, it's kind of one of those things that mental health is still very taboo. Um, there's this very much so a stigma around it because it's to be all the way honest with you without going too far back. Um, any kind of traumatic experiences and sometimes that really just is being a black person in this world is a traumatic experience in itself. Right. So any, any, anything that you're kind of used to dealing with, it's not a big topic of conversation because it's just a, it's something that we're going to always have to do with. So I think with my family, we're just now become comfortable with talking about, you know, past mental health struggles, current struggles, things that may be generational, things that are inherited amongst us. But there are a lot of things that like I know my father struggled with in particular that I think I struggle with, but I wouldn't know because he's not around to ask. So there's a lot of things that I have to figure out. Anxiety, I know for certain, comes from my mother's side. I see my grandmother struggle with anxiety. I see my aunt dealing with anxiety. And it, it is something that is all around, right? But it's one of those things where if you don't know how to identify it, then you surely can't combat it because you, you're not aware that that's what that is. You're just thinking, oh, being anxious about going outside, that's a normal feeling. Like that's something I'm almost callous to because that's just what it's like to be black <laughs> in Chicago or wherever, you know. Um, so I know that's a very long winded way to say yes. And and as I'm connecting dots 
um, between myself and my life and my life with my family and, and how I can continue to help change those things. Um, I notice those. And so that's, that's how I'm dealing with it. And that's, that's where I'm at. Once I know that, that I deal with something though, it becomes easier for me to, to safeguard myself. If that makes sense. Well, yeah, it's like the fact that you're able to acknowledge that you are dealing with it. A lot of people have the fear of acknowledging that they're dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy at all. Like if you try to ignore stuff and sweep it under the rug, that's how depression forms itself. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to express yourself thoroughly. Yeah. And in a chat room, I mean, the pool boss says most people don't realize that most inner city violence is compartmentalized yeah. to the small block areas that it's not like the whole city is a violent mess. Yeah. And he's right. Yeah. Uh, Okie doke 0808 says, what's your experience and how do you cope? And I believe that question is directly towards you. Yeah, you know, I have a lot. I mean, I deal with a lot of stuff. Like, I I deal with, like, for example, like, <clears throat> I regularly physically combat against anxiety. I can feel in my body when I'm anxious about something and I'm not breathing correctly. Because if it goes for so long, and this comes from me being trained as a an artist right me being self-aware of my body and understanding okay if i'm short-winded i can't breathe i'm i'm feeling the anxiety right i've had to research these things and figure out okay why do i why does my chest get tight why is this these are things just like with any other health ailment or anything like that like if you you know you have high blood pressure you know you're dealing with lupus you learn there are things that you eat there are things that you combat there are ways that you treat yourself like the you know like the doctor was saying at the clip in the beginning you know there are ways that you're consistently um, you're consistently combating that. But I think for me, in order for me to learn how to combat it, I had to understand I dealt with it. And I dealt with a lot of seasonal depression. I still deal with seasonal depression when the sun is not out as much. I understand that I'm a sun baby <laughs> and I have to get a, a great amount of sunlight. If I'm not getting sun, I'll get sad. I can feel it. If I'm not drinking enough water, if I'm neglecting myself because I'm trying to keep up with of social media stresses me out like that's another thing and like i know <laughs> you and i haven't talked about this in depth but you know i don't really have a phone so the only way you can really reach me is when i'm making myself available and i've done that to combat the anxiety of of being constantly available to everybody you know there are a lot of things that just us being in this generation give me stress you know bills adulting they give me stress and you and anxiety and they peak my anxiety but for me it's like honestly learning those 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 um those tools um when i wasn't creating before i was really taking the time to chase what i really wanted out of my life i was so depressed i was like every day i was on my lunch break crying because i was working at a call center and I wasn't connecting with people like I knew that I was supposed to. Every time I was going to work for two and a half years, I was in a cubicle, phone call to phone call and, and being micromanaged. And so I knew then, you know, this is real. Like I can't afford for my health just because of what I believe. Right. If I believe that that job wasn't the end for me and I was consciously settling I began to crumble from the inside out because I knew that I had these gifts, these talents, these abilities that I wasn't utilizing. So, you know, for me, now that I'm even really just thinking about it and we're having this conversation, I really did save my life. It really did because I knew that's what I was supposed to do. It took me a process of learning and unlearning and understanding like everybody's life isn't going to look like my life. I'm not going to have the typical nine to five. I'm not going to be able to have the same kind of setup that most people will because I'm called to be an artist and an educator. And so um, that's where I'm at right now with it. I mean, just being a black woman, honestly, there's so many different. <laughs> we can talk forever. Just me existing, to be honest, and me working in, in corporate in corporations, me um, navigate entrepreneurship. All of that shit is is terrifying, you know, and if you're not taking care of yourself and you're getting caught up under the current of what you should be doing, what it could have should and you're not checking your 
your mental talk, right? How you talk to yourself. You're not checking those things. You can crumble regularly under those. But thankfully, you know, another thing that that clip said that I wanted to mention is I have a great support system and I have people around me that believe in me and trust me. So that helps make things easier for me. So I like to touch on a few things that you said. Honestly, um, I still have anxiety attacks sometimes. Um, I actually had one, I want to say Tuesday when I was at the gym. Mm -hmm. So it, it was just random like hit, you know, I was in the middle of doing a set and it just randomly hit me. And you know, I, um, I battled it by just pretty much telling myself like, you know, hey, you know what? What you have? It, you don't have a reason to be anxious right now. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's kind of. Mm -hmm. I, I I've learned to put a lid on it, and it took years because, like you said, like we didn't we don't really understand what's happening at that time. We don't know what's going on. There's not a clear understanding of why it's going on when you have anxiety attack. Most black people don't have no idea what it is. They just think that their heart rates are really fast and their hands are just getting sweaty because right. they don't they don't get taught you know, mental health at a younger age. They don't learn mm -hmm. nothing about it till they get older. Yeah. So so for me, the be I learned a lot of it, you know, not by, on my own for the most part. I mean, but once I learned, you know, what anxiety was and anxiety attacks and when I was having anxiety attacks because there were times when I had them and I legit went to the hospital because I thought I was having a heart attack. I legit went to the hospital and was like, man, I'm about to have a fucking heart attack. Like, you know, like, can you guys, you know, <laughs> save my life? Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, it's crazy to think about, man. That we get we go through that. Um, I just wanted to read a couple things from the chat room. Justin says adulting is the biggest scam, and I agree with you, Justin. I didn't sign up for the shit at all. Uh, Pool boss says most cultures have an addict stigma of shame to weakness. Those vital lights are good for more than plant folks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okie okay doke says I feel you, girl. Worst days of my life. That's when I made some crucial decisions for my life. When you feel caged, you break out into anxiety attacks that help you grow. Yep. So there's a de there's definitely an upside, a very slim one, but one. Laugh out loud. Yeah. Justin also says gotta have a conversation with yourself that she's sharing about right now is so important. Going through this right now, myself realizing my life isn't meant to be usual nine to five, like she said. Yeah, I mean Justin, like Justin was a guest a few few episodes ago, and he he did an excellent job. He was very open. Uh, but being honest with yourself is the main thing. You mm -hmm. you recognize what the issue was, and you work you're working towards removing yourself from that, putting yourself in that situation. Not everything that everyone else has for them is for you. It's for you, yeah. You know, that's one of my main issues with a lot of parents try to push college on their kids. Like, oh yeah, you, you know, you do get better opportunities, quote unquote, better opportunities. Mm -hmm. But if someone is like legit hates school, like they hate school to the point where they, there's no way that they feel like they could sit through it. Mm -hmm. Then don't force them to pay thousands of dollars to go sit through something that that, that they can't they can't deal with. They hate dealing with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I I'm still going off the chat room right now. The chat room is really on fire right now. Uh, people have to take care of themselves to be worth a damn to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Anxiety attack, people may feel fearful, apprehensive, may feel their heart racing or feel short of breath. That's me. Man, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I, I, it gets to the point where, like, my hands start sweating. Mm -hmm. Your palms get really sweaty and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And you you start breathing really fast. You think you're going to pass out. It's, it's like, man. Yeah. So my mom's in the back in the chat room. She says, when you live your life for purpose, usually it decreases the levels of anxiety. A life yeah. on purpose. Yeah. Come on, mama. A, li <laughs> a life on purpose. Yeah, she brought the heat last week. Definitely. So, as far as like expressing yourself goes, uh, Simone, can you, tell, can you give the people a little bit of rundown of like what you do? Because you do, I see a lot of your work and it's like, I, I have a hard time keeping up. <laughs> it seems like you do everything. That's why I said what I said in the beginning. Yeah. I was like, it seems like she does everything. I don't know what she doesn't do. Lord. Um, I. What's cool about that is like, you know, and just going off, you know, what your mom said. Um, hey, mom. Um, <laughs> you know, even now, like even now that I got out of that, that particular role that I was in, that was really peaking me and peaking like my anxiety and peaking my stress and all those things. I think, you know, I'm a very self-reflective person. Like I I'm my only child. So really I spent the most time with myself. Right. So 
I thought a lot. I go off and and play by myself a lot. I go off and you know, and so that that taught me the skills of self reflecting. So for me, going away to college and like working with um, my mom was a teacher, so just having that innate sense of like educating. So whatever I'm learning or doing, like I'm always learning, right? So we, it's crazy that you talked about college too, because I went to school for theater. And when I got there, I, I learned that not only was I kind of okay at acting, I was actually pretty good at bringing people together, like especially people um, that were overlooked. So uh, that's kind of how, um, that's kind of the, the beta tester for my brand, creator brand, which you did basically serves as a liaison to connecting creatives in the Midwest, just currently right now. So we serve St. Louis, Chicago, and Cincinnati. Um, and these are all cities that I've lived in. These are all cities that I have friends in that create. And I've seen this common thread of, even when I was down at SIU Carbondale for school, I just saw young people that had a message and, and they wanted to say something and were overlooked and they needed someone to say, okay, y'all, this is what we going to do. And so I learned early on that I was actually, okay, pretty good at that. And, um, so that's kind of what sparked for me that I don't have to, as an adult, at least, I don't really have to stick to one thing. So, um, though theater is my background, I, do dance stuff i do music stuff i teach i write um i do take photographs and some of these things i do really honestly because i don't have the money to pay people to do it <laughs> and i have a particular and it's kind of like it's kind of like a donald glover kind of thing right like he he just kind of does everything and like even like like watching jay-z and how he moves watching oprah and how she said like i ultimately she might not have said this, but like watching her, her live her life, right? What she was saying in her career is like, I'm going to use everything and all my talents and gifts and abilities. And so I kind of do do everything and all of it is not for the same reason, right? So education for me currently pays the bills. However, um, I, I do dabble in other things because some of those things I'm not good at and it's good for me. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, wow. <laughs> the, um, your photography, I mean, you, it, it looks pretty fucking amazing to me, honestly. I mean, I don't comment on it a lot. I do see it on Instagram. Uh, Simone, can you give the people the Instagram um, account? I'm going to type it inside the chat room. I just want people to go take a look at it to know I'm just not blowing smoke. <laughs> yeah, you can follow my brand page, which is Creator Brand, which I talked about. Um, that's Hey, like, hey, y'all. Hey, Creator Brand. C R E A T O R brand B R A N D. Okay, and what's your what's your Simone, what's yeah. your official so, one? Both are my official ones because <laughs> they're both part of me. So. Just, I just wanted to get that in there because you know I I don't want people to think I'm just blowing smoke. Your work is pretty fucking amazing to look at. Um, Thank you. And I so, design clothes. I guess I should have said that too. That's like the main thing that people see. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, like when I t when I tell you guys that she does everything, like I'm the only thing she doesn't do do is probably play basketball, and I wouldn't even be surprised if she used to do that. I mean, I should have. I got a little, you know, what I'm saying, I got a little something. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, there you go. I'm just I, kidding. I, I, was, I was right. Um, <laughs> the chat room was on fire right now, as usual. Uh, Justin said, my dad owns his own painting business. I do enjoy it. Lots of freedom. Yeah. I love being in a change in houses, commercial jobs, and the things I've learned on job sites can never be taught in school. Because, I, you know, they, they was, we were talking about the college thing, and how people did a trade school. I did go to carpentry school. Yeah. And I did I did carpentry for a while. It, it's that's, that's definitely honest work. And that blue collar work is honest work. And that's actually a form of creating. Granted that you're not doing, you're not freelancing when you're on at work. But you can woodwork, woodwork is a great way for expressing yourself. You know, it's a great way yeah. to to get your ideas out. And it's a great way to keep busy because, I mean, hell, you get home, you get to go get you some two by fours. You just start. You just go to work, man. You create whatever yeah. you want to create. Yeah. Uh, my mom says most artists have an enormous amount of talents, and it's a lifelong discovery, which is a pleasant gift of treasures unlocked. She got the bars, man. That woman's a writer. <laughs> She is a writer. Yeah, she's definitely the truth for sure. So, 
uh, again, um, you know, you said something about, you know, you was growing up and uh, you said your dad wasn't around. Uh, that when my parents got divorced when I was 15, so I, you know, I, it wasn't early on for them to, for him to leave. I mean, granted, my dad's a big part of my life. I stay in contact with him, mm -hmm. but you know, those kind of feelings from from that, like seeing the separation of your parents, can leave a, a a lasting effect on you. As far as like when you get older, you you know, thinking about relationships and wonder if it's worth it for you to get into like a long term committed one. Because that is that. True. Yeah, because you're right. You, you see that your parents were together for you know twenty plus years or however long they were together, and to know that it didn't work out for them, uh, that I, I mean that could cause some type of you know some deep rooted anxiety in itself, as far as like commitment issues with people. Yeah. So, and I'll um, say this: like the way you just said that, you summed that up so well. But that's that awareness is not something that most people have. Like most people don't understand that a lot of the ways they view men, a lot of the ways they view women, a lot of the ways they view relationships and dynamics and life goals, period, comes from your a, a lot of your root, your upbringing. Right. So even you just simply s stating like if you see that fall apart, it makes you realize if it's even worth it, if that's even possible. And um, I think that's really dope. I kind of sound like I knew what I was talking about just now, didn't I? A little bit in that moment. Just, just a little bit. I, I have my moments sometimes. <laughs> man, you know, every now and then, people tune in. They're like, "Oh, you know, Trey sound like you know what he's talking about a little bit." Yeah, you got a good inheritance. I mean, that's that's just what God's gifted for you. So, yep. It was so funny last week. My mom was talking about uh, we was talking about quiet time. She used to make us go sit in the room for about twenty. 30 minutes of, of every day to read the read Bible verses. Man, I used to hate that when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> but it taught you how to go sit down somewhere and sit down and really sit and be. Some people can't sit down because they can't stand to sit with themselves. And, you know, that, that'll cripple you. And that will also damage your relationships. I know a woman now, you know, married with two kids, and she'll say, I don't like to be by myself. I don't like to be alone. I don't like, you know, and I'll be and I'll be real with you. Like even my transition here coming to Cincinnati, it wasn't easy. There was a lot of kinks in the road and it was a lot of testing. And there's a lot of things that at one point I just ended up in in the lab, in the in the studio, just working. I, that's all I would do is just go to work, come home, work in the studio. And that would be it. You know, and you realize like. A lot of the times to deal with yourself, you have to get by yourself. And sometimes we got to learn how to do that. And it's not always easy. That's what, that's, that could be very uncomfortable for certain people just learning to be by themselves because they're not satisfied with who they are as a person at the, at the current time. And it's um, scary. I mean, not just that, because I think sometimes when we say that, it, that sounds so like you don't want to be with yourself because you don't love yourself. And then it's like, that turns people off. Cause that's like, I don't well, want to hear not, that. Not, like, not love, not to, love, your, not love no, yourself. I know you're not but saying like, that. I know but, you're not saying but, that, but when that's I, when not I say like, that, when, when I say that, I mean like, okay. Um, they obviously it's, it's human nature to feel like there's something that you could do differently. You know, it's just human nature to feel like, you know, Oh, I could be doing this differently. Oh, I'm not satisfied with this. Oh, I'm not that. But a lot of people don't, they don't, appreciate where they're at right now in their growth that's yeah. what i'm trying to say like they yeah, feel like, they feel like oh they feel like oh i should be at a certain point right now in life and that goes back to what you said because me and richard taylor on episode number six or seven of the, of the show we had a conversation and we were talking about how social media like you said earlier mm -hmm. you know a lot of people see what other people are at in life and they feel like that's where they need to be but they only post their victories on social media yeah, post, that's all for show <laughs> they don't post. They don't post their failures. They don't post their shortcomings. The only thing they post on social media is their accomplishments, their, their things that are going well in life. They don't post. They don't post things that that don't go well. So with us seeing that, you know, we feel like okay, well, that's where I need life need to be, and it's, it all comes full circle. So another thing I said, like you see someone who's always traveling and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and you can't afford to travel like that because you have kids and shit like that, and they. In their mind, they're they're hurting because they don't have a family at home, but you have a family at home, and you're hurting because you don't have the income to travel like that. That's why I say everything always comes full circle. Mm -hmm. The grass is never greener for any side at yeah. all. It always comes full circle every time. 
Yeah, you're right. And I think, too, you will see some people, like, it depends on what medium you're on. So, like, on Facebook, you might see people like, oh, yeah, I just got into this car accident. Like, God is, God is good. And they'll show, like, their car totaled. Or, like, they'll like, be in the hospital bed, laid up, taking a selfie. Like, some people are, like, some people are kind of like... Not the hospital. But look, when they post a wristband, you talking yeah, about... Yeah, they post a wristband and they still wear it. It's like, sometimes, you know, sometimes people have this victim mentality, you know, of this, like... And I know this is not on the topic of art, but it, I guess it could be. It's life, you know? And, and, and I notice that sometimes there are people that they, they only know how to gain any kind of... Um, I guess the reason why I'm saying this is a lot of times what we're looking for is that community. And we're looking for that relationship, that um, accountability, because I, I, like I said, I spend a lot of time by myself because I'm the only child. So I'm the person I talk to the most. And my, you know what I mean? You're you're the person you talk to the most. You're the person you spend the most time with. So because I'm an only child, I'm aware of that. Um, and I, I'm like hyper aware of the fact that I talk a lot in my own head and and I am my harshest critic and and should be my best friend but you know we got to learn we got to change how we talk to ourselves um and and perceive ourselves i think and that is what our do is like okay i'm this is normal like how i feel is normal what i think is not always normal but it's you know i'm human and i'm it's okay that i'm like this or i doubt this or i feel this way or i need a break from social media because you know whatever um, we're human. That's normal. It's, it's very normal to feel that way. So the chat room is on fire. Uh, it, sh- it shouldn't keep you from being in a relationship. It should make us all more careful about the type of relationships we choose to be with. And that goes back to what we're talking about with the divorce with the parents. Yeah. Uh, Pooba says the hardest work is the most rewarding. And that's very true. Justin says people are too afraid to be honest with themselves because of creating this imaginary competition we make up in our heads. Mm. That, that, and that's, that's association with the social media thing. We see someone doing so well with their life that we feel like that's exactly what we need to be at with our life. That's all associated. And you know what I think about? I've always found that, you know, if we're... Oh, Smooch, I can call you. Uh, sorry, Smooch. Um, if we're real about it, I can't... If we're real about it... Um, Sorry, you got a phone call. If we were real about it, um, there is no such thing as competition because nobody can do the things that you're called to do on this earth and nobody can do the things that I'm called to do. Unless we forfeit it and say, I'm just plain not going to do it. I'm going to walk away from everything that I'm supposed to do. Then that that's forfeiting it, you know, and there, I just think that no such thing as competition there is competition if you want to if you want that in your life but you know nobody is called to do the things that you do and your path is your path for a reason so so (laughs) as as, my mom's still going off in the chat room as she usually does she says i teach yoga and the one thing i learned is mind body and self-discovery I like being alone and value the me time. Gotta like or love yourself to be able to love others. You will mirror and attract what you are, and it's imperative to have me time. It's very imperative. Uh, Poolbot says he appreciates what you know what I'm doing as far as like with the show and for myself as well in doing this. And I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Like I say regularly, you guys don't have to take time out to listen to the show, and even outside the show, you don't have to take time to listen re-listen to the podcast later on. I appreciate you guys for all taking time out of your day to listen or give feedback or give me a like on a post on social media or, you know, like the feedback does. I mean, I, I respond to everybody and I, it sometimes, you know, I, I, when I do respond, it kind of sounds like I'm being like generic a little bit, but that's not the case at all. Like that's, that's truly how I feel. When I say, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to say something to me because you don't have to respond to me. You don't have to say anything. You could just tune in and I appreciate that already in itself. Now, with that being mm-hmm. said, uh, me time is becoming better. F- you for those love quiet time is real. We still talking about quiet time. You know what? When I was a kid, I used to hate quiet time, man. But now I'm a grown ass. I'm a grown ass man, and and quiet time to me at this stage in my life is the most underappreciated thing that you could ever have in your life. You never mm-hmm. get any qu- downtime at all. Now, you had all downtime in the world when you were a kid, but at this stage in life, you never get it. 
Justice says, quiet time is where we find the answers we need, in my opinion. So. <laughs> Can I say this? I also make it a point to build quiet time into my week. Like, if I know I've been going, going, going for, like, a few days. Just like how you, like, okay, you build a workout in. Or you say, I need to take this time to really pay attention to what I'm feeding my body physically because I know I'm eating trash. It's the same kind of thing. So, with me being an artist and working as an educator and like being able to fight for you know it's been a couple of years now i've been able to build my life up in a way where i can work for myself and i can build time into my day really critical to spend time by myself um and that is very crucial so yeah that's intentional so just like you would find time to go watch tv i don't watch tv so instead of watching tv i'd go write or I go to sleep or go, you know, I just, or if I'm watching television, I, I set Hold on, time Samoa, apart are you, for that. Are you, are you personally attacking me right now when you say, when you said no, time to decide to go watch TV? Because I don't like being personally attacked on my own <laughs> show. That's not a call for. <laughs> I'm just saying, me. this is what I do. We're talking about what Simone does to manage, you know what I'm saying, the things that she's dealt with. And, and, you know, one day I really had to sit, I used to watch a lot of television. And I grew up watching television, and my mom just would say, here, go watch TV. And so I got so used to it, but eventually I found out that I was spending so much time watching what other people were doing. I was missing out on valuable time to work on myself. So I'm not saying you, you watch out the TV you want to, but just know that every. I, I only watch. That's what everybody knows me. Look, everybody knows I only watch TV for football, and football only comes on about two or three days a week. That's it. Well, live your best life, brother. Live your best and, life. <laughs> and football only lasts about. And football only lasts about five months a year. I mean, I'm that, not mad about lucky. it. Like, there's there's some shows like Atlanta, Insecure. Like, there's a lot of shows that I watch just to watch. I study them because you know that's just the person I am. But I ain't watching to enjoy them, and that takes up a lot of my time. But I'm just intentional about. I don't just come on and turn the TV on and just let's see what's on TV. You get what I'm saying? It's like oh, a, no, like I, if I'm no, gonna go watch something. Uh, no. Mm-mm. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. That's helpful. So, so the chat room is still going off. Uh, they say not competition by identity <laughs> crisis. People not knowing who they are, so they imitating others to create a, a their self. You know, just yep. accept and be yourself. Uh, yep. Justin says something. He says, "I'm here because I get more out of this hour than I can get anywhere else at this time. Real conversation isn't happening and enough, and I appreciate y'all." Uh, Justin, like I, I mean, oh, Justin, you have my phone number, man. If you ever feel like you need to reach out to somebody, you know, you have my personal phone number, dude. Like, just you know, hit me up, man. I I available to talk unless I'm sleep. You know, <laughs> that's about the only time. Or, or I'm like, you know, squatting two seventy five, then I can't talk at that time. But if if you if you <laughs> if you want to talk to me, man, you got my number, literally, and I mean that. Most people in here have a way to reach out to me. If you want to talk, reach out to me. If I can't respond immediately, I would respond. At my earliest convenience, whatever that is. Besides, we imitate others, but who themselves are stumbling blind. Yep, that's exactly what I said. People only post their victories on social media. They don't post their losings. They don't post the late bills. They don't post the fact that they got rolled up at work. They don't post the fact that their girlfriend hates them at that time. Nobody posts that on social media. And the people that do post it, you, you do you do see it. But. Still though, like you, we, on social media, for the most part, and Simone, you could attest to this. People only post the, the 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 things that make them look amazing. Like I travel every other month, or I got this coming in for me, and blah blah blah. Yeah, and I mean, I I because of I have a, a kind of different perspective because as an artist and as an entrepreneur, you have to use social media as a tool. As opposed oh, yeah, to yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. As a tool, yeah, I, for sure. Me too. I use it for a tool for my show. Yeah, but outside of being using a tool, like a lot of people like to flex on there. You know what I mean when I say that, right? They, they flex on there to to make it seem like they like something that is not. And people yeah, that don't understand, people, people that don't understand that they see the flexing going on, and they feel like. Well, I should be at that stage. You know, this person is young. This person is such and such age, and this person, you know, he's he's does this, does that. You know, that's again. They, people only post their victories online, and we feel like that's where we need to be at. And I'm trying to keep up with the chat room right now, but I can't, man. My boy Dan. Dan says, "How Dan said, how's everybody doing tonight? Looks like everybody's doing fine." Bobby, Fe- Bobby, Bobby's in the chat room. What's up, Bob? 
Uh, man, we got a lot going on. Do 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 do. Pooba says, uh, like Mama <laughs> Trey, and Coach Nagy says, be you. That's just, that's just very true. Be yourself. Um, express yourself freely. You don't feel like you'll be judged for expressing yourself. That's what art's all about. It's expression. You know, there's a variety of different ty types of art. You know, for me personally, I can't draw for shit. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Um, it, when it comes to drawing. You're going to see the stick figures in the house with the little square window. That's about it. The, 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 little, the little curly lines for the clouds in the corner of the, of the room. That's all I got for you. You know, I can't draw. The good Lord the, the good Lord ain't, ain't blessed me with the ability to draw. But I could pretty much, I'm pretty good with other things in my life. <laughs> I, can't be, I can't be on Simone's level. I don't draw though, so like I don't. It's, wait, it's wait, all I, I know. Kind of I, hey, but you do it. You literally do everything else though. But <laughs> as far as drawing, I, I can't do that. But you're good at everything else. The pictures. I'm not the, good at the I'm fashion. Not a, I'm not a good painter. I'm not a good painter, and I'm a way worse dancer than what I think I am. Because like I today, I'm. Is that like the at case home. for everybody though? Is that the case for everybody? They, they huh? think everybody thinks they're a good dancer until they're yeah, not. You. <laughs> when, I, when I light hit you. And everybody's you looking know, at you. Like, you look crazy. Yeah. That's when everybody's like, damn, this dude really can't dance. No, nope, <laughs> no, nope, really can't. You could can try, but it's just not, it's not your strength. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just laughing at the fact. I was thinking about uh, just people dancing when, it, when they're at a wedding or something or the light mm -hmm. hits them. And it's like the light hits you and it's your time to express yourself through dance, which is a very, very important part of art. For society is dancing, and they 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 just can't fucking they don't know how to dance. Um, one thing I really love about the Chicago Bears right now is that um, every time there's a win, I'm not sure if you know this or not, Simone, but every time there's a victory for the team in the locker room, they turn the locker room into a club. So they pull out the whole, they pull out the lights, the strobe lights, and they got the the music going, and everybody's in there dancing, and it's just like the best. It's the best thing ever. Like it's literally the best thing ever, and I'm like. This Sunday, we play the Packers for a chance to win the division. Uh -huh. And I was like, if we win on Sunday, we need to go ahead and pull out the, you know what I'm saying, pull out the, the speakers and put on Finito by Chief Keith and let's get it going in the All middle right. of Soldier Field. In the middle of the whole Soldier Field. Put on Finito and make it happen. I'm I just saying. Should, I think you should send that email. I might have to look. I might have so to go ahead and pull some st pull some strings or something. I might have to stop by Lake Forest on one of my one of my work days and be like, "Hey, you know, Nagy, you know, Coach Nagy, I need you to go ahead and make that happen, man. It's time." Yeah, I think that'd be dope. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, man. I'm just I, we we went off the rails sometimes. Sometimes we go off the rails a little bit with the show, but that's okay. You know, that's the whole purpose of the show. We're expressing ourselves right now. It's art. So I'm not. You know, another form of art, like, do you do you like musicals, Simone? Like, are you big on musicals? I, that's funny that you asked me that. I do not like musicals at all. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'll look, tell I you why. <laughs> Can I tell you why, though? Most people, like, are really, like, they're like, what? How don't you like? I don't tell a lot of people that because they always ask me, well, how don't you like musicals? You're a theater kid. I, I've never really seen musicals that mean anything for me, like, that really, res you know, that resonate with me. So, I just figure they're not for me, so I don't like them. <laughs> I, I, um, bad, what's up, Badge? Badge talking about great stuff tonight, Trey. I appreciate you for tuning in. Hey, Aaron, hey, Aaron, talking about my coming downtown Saturday. I gotta see, man. Um, I gotta see what my schedule's looking like. I would like to come out town and you know, hang out, everybody. Uh, Dan say he's about to hit some weights, man. Oh, man. Uh, Bob, Bobby dropped a uh, bomb in the chat room. Uh, says his dad's dealing with terminal leukemia. Uh, house has over ninety k in damage. Wife had a heart attack. Man, Bob, you know we need we need to. I mean, if we need to have a conversation, man, or something, man, you know I'm always I'm always available. I'm always available to talk, man. This is it. Really, I really. I'm sorry to hear that for sure. Um. Ah, man. <sighs> Sorry, I feel like the whole vibe of the chat room changed, man. But again, um, you have you have a support system here, uh, with the Bears Bar Room. You know that, man. You know you know I'm here for you if you need to talk. 
for sure. I hate that you're on that you're on the other side of the country, man. Like you know, all the way on the East Coast. Otherwise, you know, as far as like with the house damage, man, I'm you know, with my carpentry background, I'd be more than happy to help you out. Bobby is a Bobby is a huge part of the network. Bobby does everything for the network, man. The, the you know the stickers, and he helps out for the tailgate show on Sundays. Um, man, it was, I'm just sorry to hear that. It's, no, 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 re- no need to apologize, man. That's the whole purpose of the show, man. I, I want people to feel the freedom to come in here and say what they have to say and get the support from others. That's literally the whole purpose of the show. It's a support system. It's a support group. That's the whole purpose of it. So, thank you for that. Simone, you still there? Oh, man, I think I lost, I think I lost Simone. Damn, it's just me by myself now, which is fine. You know, Simone was a great guest tonight. Uh, I appreciate you guys in the chat room, as usual. Am I going to do Steak and Whiskey Live on Saturday night? I probably can if you really need me to. I wouldn't mind it. I, if I'm able to come out there, I'll definitely I have no problem walking on stage and taking the microphone and talking in front of people. That's something that I'm really comfortable with doing. Uh, both my parents, uh, this is a little known fact about my family, uh, both my parents were both pastors at some point in time. And I regularly used to watch them give sermons. They were youth pastors and sometimes filled in for, for the head pastor in charge. So I have no problem with just from seeing them and from my own experience. I have no problem just walking up on the stage and taking a mic and talking. Honestly. Just saying, <sighs> man. You guys, you guys. I really appreciate everybody for coming out, and supporting, coming on tonight, and coming to the chat room, and supporting the conversation, and be able to come be a part of it. Up, oh, this. I, I think. I think Simone's back. Simone, is that you? Yes. There she is. I was holding down for you. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Um, the only thing you missed was yeah, I um, you. I was, the only thing you missed was just me saying how you know I got to going off into a little a rant about how uh, I appreciate everybody for coming into the chat room and listening tonight and it's true you know they didn't have to take time out of their busy day to come listen and you did an excellent job tonight thank you a very a very very good job tonight you know everybody loves you in the chat room yeah. Dan, Dan's cracking jokes about you in the chat room. He said you must be on an Android right now. Uh, no, I don't do Android things. <laughs> uh, I, that, look, that was a, that's a reoccurring joke for me because I had a guest on before, and their, their phone kept kind of like going in and out a little bit, and I was like, "Oh, uh, you must be on an Android." Right. <laughs> so, yeah, people are. Uh, People are going off in the chat room. I was just giving Bobby his support, man. That's one of my that's one of my guys, man. You gotta support the fellas. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you though, Simone, if you got any more remarks to say because you've been gone for a minute. You know, I've I've been talking, I've been holding it down. <laughs> nah, that's it. I mean, y'all feel free to follow me. I post stuff. Y'all might like it. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you will, you know, it's very, <laughs> you always ask questions too. you be hitting us with that little poll, talking about did you create today? And, yep. And, and that's very important for people to be able to express themselves, like, art, like this whole show has been about, art is a great way for let, for letting out what you're holding down inside you. It's a great way for getting that energy out that, that that's in there. You know, it, 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 you create this and you need to express it. If you people don't express themselves, then they hold it in. If you hold something in for so long, that's how depression takes place. Yeah. You need to learn to express yourself. A lot of people don't know what their gift is. A lot, everyone has a gift. You need to figure out what your gift is, and you need to put it towards use. Start putting use towards it. Um, some people play instruments. Some people act. Some people dance. Some people sing. Some people, God forbid, do musicals. Um <laughs> Yep. I'm, not, I'm not a musical person. Neither is Simone. Some people are. That's why they still exist in this in this world. So, 
you know, theater. You know, I mean, there's something for everybody. There's something for everybody, man. I mean, if you want to go make uh, clay formation pots or something like that, there's something for everybody. Yeah. My mom says a strong support group of a community helps us get through tough and, and most difficult times. And that's literally when I promise you, and I'm saying this, and it's the God, the God truth. That's literally the whole purpose of the show is for me to create a, a support group for everybody out there to come together and be able to have the conversation and be able to express themselves. That's the whole purpose of the show. You know, I want to talk about art. And I was like, hmm, who do I know that's really an artistic person? Boom. I'm just saying. Simone is like, the only thing she doesn't do is musicals, and I don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop bashing musicals, because some people might be in there like, hey, I like the Lion King musical, you know, or somebody might get triggered. You know, I don't want to trigger nobody. Yeah, you don't want to do that. I'm like, I like the Beauty and the Beast musical. I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to close out the show tonight. I thank everybody for listening. I thank everybody for their feedback in the chat room. Um, I still have a couple more messages popping in. I'm going to go ahead and read the last messages. Um, that they say... <laughs> Bobby says that's right Trey don't count the days make the days count that's that's true yeah, make yeah. the days count don't just count your days uh, my mom hit us with the, unlock those hidden treasures cope with your anxiety with a healthy outlet and in constructive ways be okay with you and express yourself in a creative way a functional healthy way yeah. that's why I go to the gym every other day you know the gym is a way for me to express myself as a way for me to let out the energy. And it's very necessary for me, honestly, at this point. It's more so mental for me than it is for f physically for me to express myself there. Hell, hell, I might go tonight, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, I appreciate you, Poobah, for turning in, man. I appreciate all you guys for tuning in. Uh, like I say every week, uh, this show wouldn't be, wouldn't be the same without you guys coming in and listening. So... With that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to close out the show. Simone, Max, you got any more last words? I don't. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. All right. With that being said, man, I really appreciate you guys turning in. and I, I anticipate you guys tuning in next week. So I'll talk to you guys in a week. Peace.